Compared to the east side of the state, West Michigan's been fairly lucky, at least to this time stamp of not having as many cases. Um, but is COVID-19 here? Have you have you worked on patients at Metro Health with this uh, official condition? Yes, uh, COVID-19 is in West Michigan. Um, it's been in our hospital. We, we had our first confirmed diagnosed case uh, fairly recently within the last few days. Um, we have several more patients that are presumed COVID-19 positive patients, and they're in the all the precaution areas of the hospital, mm -hmm. special rooms, things of that nature, respiratory droplet precautions, personal protective equipment to take care of those patients. So yeah, it's, it's, it's here, whether you're a big system or a small system or a medium-sized system, it's absolutely here. I, I'm kind of telling my family and, and um, my team that we need, probably need to assume one in eight, one in 10 of us um, has recently been infected. And, and part of the challenge with this disease is that there are so many mild or not symptomatic uh, patients that when you're when you don't have symptoms you don't know what to do so you're doing what you do and yeah, you're not going to modify yeah, if you feel healthy yeah it's it's like you know and I think Kevin Durant's story kind of comes to mind uh, he got it you know from from maybe a game or a fan or something but he's like I had nothing and like and if someone just didn't test me I wouldn't right. have known I would have been doing what I normally do I mean I would have sheltered in place because I'm in New York I get that or New Jersey but you know, it's just, um, yeah, that makes it tricky. And I think one of the things that's really challenging for America right now and Michigan in particular as well is there's some rationing kind of going on here, right? Yeah. We don't have 300 million testing kits, right? right? We have a fraction of that. And then also the so person. How, how, yeah. how does that impact you? I mean, is that, I know we should be testing a lot more, right? Yeah, so I think the science is, the science suggests we probably don't need to do that, but I think there's a there's a irrationality, there's a panic, there's a uh, I want to protect my mother, and my father. Um, for children, this is a, a non-issue. Uh, for the vast majority of them, men seem to be preferentially hit with this compared to women. That's some new data that's come out of China, verified by Italy and Japan and South Korea. So, so I do think if we could. In, in order to allay fear, I think there's a couple of things that probably would be done in a totally perfect utopic scenario, and that is that we would have anyone that thought they needed a test, yeah, can get it. <laughs> I think yeah. that's one thing, and and then and then the appropriate isolation slash treatment or sure. observation would be done for those people. And then two is, you know, personal protective equipment. If you think for whatever reason when you go to the grocery store you need a mask, yeah, okay. Sure. have it. Now there's a science that says, look, maybe this isn't necessary. It's most important for those that actually have symptoms and coughing yeah. to, to mask so that they don't have these respiratory droplets that get other people sick. Yeah. But we're in this sort of irrational time. This Full Exposure podcast episode has been made possible through the support of Metro Health, University of Michigan Health, and Dr. Peter Hahn, who believe that creativity and the arts are essential to a rich, healthy, and fulfilling life.